Sonic the Continuation, Issue 19. Already it's exciting because of the cover. The person thanking Omni for transporting him from another universe is the Kentoborg computer, who has a new body. He says nanite technology can produce amazing robotics as we see a panel lifted up in his arm. So it's not a body, it's a robot body. Good enough on the outside, and even more useful. But I don't know if it'll let him eat and drink it. I guess by her, he means Nicole. But it's confusing, because they just came from the Ghosts of the Future crossover. Which insists on taking place in a depressing future where a good version of Nicole would be lucky to still exist, and that comic had an evil Nicole. Also, I feel like the heroes were fine with Kintobor being an AI because he was always right where they wanted him to be. Which won't be the case anymore. Omni warns him that Emerald Hill Zone was turned into a crater. He wants to go to Metropolis Zone, and he sees that Eggman took back Metropolis. I don't like seeing that he has the long, extendable robot neck, but at least it's robotic looking instead of skin colored. Kintobor says he needs to learn what he can in the capital to find his friends. He wonders how Eggman took over the world again so quickly after saying he was only gone a couple months. Because Eggman needed several months to do it last time. Whoa, Manix here? It's awesome that the comic had the guts to do that. That's to see online only had a character look like Manic as a cameo and never had the guts to acknowledge who he was. He tries to steal from Kintobor after only seeing him from behind. Then he fortunately gets prevented from doing so by an electrifying robot tentacle. I can't get enough of how many cool upgrades his body has. Sonic had to be made in a test tube to exist in this comic's continuity. So at first it might seem confusing that Manic got to be born at all because Sonic never acted like he knew Manic, but Manic existing could still be believable because it could have been the last kid Sonic's parents got to have before dying, or been from a different universe, which can be believable if even Rouge and her family are from another universe. Manic and Sonya are only fraternal twins of Sonic, so they didn't need to all be conceived in the same pregnancy to be exactly who they are. He's surprised to see a hedgehog, and wow, Sonya shows up right afterwards. There are people in real life with the name Sonya, and it's pronounced like that, by the way. She kicks Kintobor, and Manic's impressed and thanks her, being only mostly green for some reason. Sonya's also brown for the most part. I don't know why the artists thought we wanted that. We clearly would want them to look how they're supposed to. And it's just making us wonder how them looking like this is even possible when they didn't in the show. Meaning they had different DNA in the show. If they only have any green or pink hair because they dyed it, they obviously would have dyed all of their hair. Them being hedgehogs is no excuse for them being brown when Shadow isn't. I'm pretty sure Chuck isn't brown in this comic, and it obviously looked terrible if he was. Based on the shading when he was in shadow, it looks like he was blue. It's ridiculous that they're colored wrong. The same logic in favor of it would also apply to making shadow brown too. Because he never got caught in a chaos energy explosion from a speed measuring machine either. But if the writer knows not to make him brown, why mess up their designs if you cared enough to use them? There's a lot worse they could look, but still. You know, Silver the Hedgehog isn't brown. If he's gonna be brown if he shows up in this comic, that'll be pretty weird. She wishes she didn't have to bail Manic out of everything. So if she does this all the time, why did he say, whoa, when she freed him from his grip? Then the two of them get threatened by a robot whose number one priority is to destroy hedgehogs. Why wouldn't it be to destroy Sonic? They'd be distracted destroying other hedgehogs and Sonic most of the time then. This combines with Kintobor being surprised that he's a hedgehog implies that hedgehogs are really rare. It makes sense that that'd be the case because Sonic's the main character, so a writer would be more inclined to make him more special. But it's confusing anyways because hedgehogs are the most common race of Mobian in the game's universe, with there being Sonic, Shadow, Silver, and Amy. So hedgehogs are the last race I'd expect to be endangered. The robot tries to kill the two of them, which is going to be worth it if it gives Kintobor an excuse to save them and make them feel like actually talking to him. He tells them to run away as he punches the robot. Manic frustrates me by acting like it doesn't matter who Kintobor is, even though he's a cyborg. You'd think he'd be interested. 
Then they get threatened by Aspen, who has some entertaining dialogue. Manic gets threatened, and Sonya bravely tries to save him, attacking Aspen. But they don't seem like they're able to take him. I have to assume Kentipur's not attacking on this page because he doesn't want to hurt them by mistake. That's the only excuse, because if he can attack by extending his arm, he could punch it from a safe distance repeatedly. Kentipur sends some brown smoke at the robot. It's cool how many abilities he has out of nowhere. He tells them to go and he'll cover them. So they try to go into the sewers to a manhole that was conveniently right there. Thankfully, Sonya tells him to come with them because she cares about him. I'm glad she has that morality. Kentibor's smirking mustache and shades still reminds me of Eggman, and that makes me appreciate his morality all the more. Well, man, it's confused, but... It's always shocking how cynical Manic was. Maybe because his voice and cheerful personality wouldn't make you expect it. Then after Sonya tells Kentibor how Eggman took over the planet again, Kentibor somehow says it's all his fault that Eggman got into the Ark for no reason and doesn't explain himself. Like he has to because he's trying to get their trust. So of course Manic's suspicious. I'm pretty sure the Kentibor computer never got the chance to go to the Ark. So he couldn't have put a security system in there. They plan on taking him to see the commander because he saved them. Sonya says they should let the boss sort him out, which sounds menacing. Sonya and Manic finally tell Kentibor their names. He comments, Your names? And Sonya just says that their mom was a fangirl. That's it? That better not be the extent of the explanation. The only reason their mom would be a huge fangirl of Sonic is if she found out about Sonic's heroism. But he didn't do anything heroic until he was 15. And these two don't look like babies, they look a similar age to Sonic. So the only reason they'd actually be named that way because their mother's a fangirl is if either one, she's from another universe where Sonic's heroism is already known, or two, someone who can find out about other universes or the future told her that Sonic would be an awesome hero, and she became a fangirl and named her kids in a way that's based off him. Three, their mom time traveled into the future herself and found out Sonic would end up a hero, or four, she means that their mom renamed them very recently because she's a fan of Sonic. But that would be bad parenting. There's no indication that their names are just nicknames. Or they'd just tell Kintipur that. It's very confusing. It'd make more sense if it was their idea to have those nicknames. Unless their mom's from a universe that's 15 years behind Sonic's and has a heroic Sonic in it. This would make no sense. They get taken to the underground. Kintipur is surprised at seeing a human. And Sonya explains that she and Manic have been acting as scouts for the gun resistance cells out in the streets. And anyone they think is important gets brought back to them to meet the commander. A person in white clothes says that Kentibor has his face but can't be him. Suddenly it turns out Grimer's the commander. And not the gun commander. It's about time he showed up again. This is actually a nice surprise. Taking advantage of how he's working for Gun now. With Kentibor not trusting him, Grimer says that he was devoted to the idea of Eggman. Well, he was disappointed by the reality. That sounds more like something Starline would say than Grimer. The only reason Grimer quit is that Robotnik went crazy and wanted Chaos to destroy him and everyone else. That's not part of the reality of Robotnik being disappointing. It's just something that only happened briefly because he was so disappointed that he was overthrown as ruler of the world. It wasn't really the real him, it was just him having a breakdown. I'd rather Grimer just say that instead of talking as if he's opposed to Eggman in general and how he's a bad boss. Which isn't true or he would have quit much earlier. But he has to talk like this to make Manic think he's actually remorseful for working for him. I thought from Grimer casually talking to him instead of asking who he is right away that Grimer immediately assumed he was Kintobor in a new body. Instead he asks him who he is even though he looks like Kintobor. So who else would it be? Then Grimer figures out that he has to be the Kintobor computer with the robot body. Then why didn't he know that from the start? Eventually, Grimer asks Kentibor what the Eclipse Cannon and Ark were, justifying that he'd know this because he has the memories of the original Kentibor. The humans were just as surprised by all of this. Kentibor says the Ark was the magnum opus of the Kentibor family. So in this universe, the Kentibor family made the Ark. When I see most of the time that Gerald just happened to work there after someone else made it. Grimer says smartly that he thought it'd be something like that, and says that he always wondered how Kentipur got to Mobius. 
Kentibor says the Kentibor family were decades ahead of the rest of the humans. But the Eclipse Cannon was one of their mistakes. If they made it to have a way to get rid of the Black Arms, like in Shadow, which I'd say because the comics having an SE2 adaptation, it wasn't a mistake in the long term because it can do that. It's just a mistake now because Eggman has it. Grammar says they'll need his help with the Visitor, a white robot they said was damaged in battle. And the gun resistance needs all the help it can get. Where's it planning to fight this resistance, though? Space? People were clearly shown that if you fight back anywhere, the entire zone gets blown up. So they'd have to fight in space. The story is spending way too much time on Kentibor meeting Manic and discussing stuff we already know, when all I want is for it to explain how Sonya and Manic exist and show Sonic talk to Chuck. Then we see Sally say that she calls on every Mobian to rise up, even though the heroes were clearly shown that Robotnik would destroy any zone with rebels in it. It's not like they've already put everyone on the planet in the Nameless Zone, and even if they did, causing them to destroy every zone where people are destroying robots would clearly not be worth it. It's ridiculous and out of character the Freedom Fighters to care more about spiting Robotnik than whether entire zones get destroyed, which doesn't seem to be a thought on their minds. For example, I know the reboot isn't canon to this, but in the reboot, the Freedom Fighters didn't even want to risk destroying an entire cave because it looked pretty, let alone a whole country. Amy misses the point and just compliments her, and Tails wishes that he could talk Errol's sister out of coming to Mobius. I guess because he hates her personality. Because without that, it'd make no sense that he wouldn't want another capable fighter fighting for Mobius. I like that she wants to see Mobius for herself, when it was Tails' idea to bring her there in SEC Online. The issue ends with Amy thinking that Robotnik's gonna be shown how wrong he is about the fact that he won, as everyone just conveniently forgets about the Zone Destroyer, and the Goblin Leader has this annoyed look on her face. But I guess it's not because of that, at this point. It doesn't look trustworthy, and it's annoying because she should know that Robotnik deserves to be rebelled against. This issue by Akito is about the Kentibor computer returning to Mobius with an awesome android body full of upgrades like Rick Sanchez and meeting Manic, who's working for Grimer's Rebellion. But the issue refuses to care about giving us information that's vital for this making sense. It refuses to explain how Kentibor got to Mobius like this. I assume it's thanks to Nicole, but because she's evil and goes to the future, I don't see how he would have gotten access to her nanotechnology at all. Did he reprogram her to be good? And it's confusing that Manic and Sonya exist. Because everyone knows they're Sonic's paternal twins. And that they're the same age as Sonic. So obviously his parents would have to exist for them to. But in this comic, Sonic had to be made in a test tube. Implying that his mother wasn't around to give birth to or conceive him at that point. So these two would have to be older than him. At least by a year. I can easily assume that Manic's mother died before getting to conceive or give birth to Sonic, so he had to be made artificially, and because fraternal twins are no different genetically than regular siblings, Sonic and Manic don't have to be twins to come to existence. Or Manic and Sonya are from another universe or timeline, which would make a lot more sense, because unless their mother has access to someone who can see into the future, well, the Oracle Delphius from Sonic Underground could do that. So maybe the Oracle Delphia has told their mother that Sonic was going to be an amazing hero in 15 years. Other than her going to a future or another timeline, that's the only reason she would name Sonya and Manic the way they are, just because she's amazed by Sonic. It's also hard to understand why the artists thought we'd want to see Manic and Sonya with some brown fur, just because Sonic and Amy were born with brown fur and had to have it changed. Those are just two measly people, that's not enough to prove that all hedgehogs are that way and justify making them not look like they're supposed to, and almost defeat the point of the fan service. When you think the artists would know that if people want to see Sonya Manic, they want to see them looking right. It goes without saying that they need to be colored properly later. And that Chuck needs to be the right color. Or everyone's going to be baffled and disappointed. He's a scientist, so it could make sense that he'd make it so that the same thing that turned Sonic blue happened to him. So there'd be no excuse for coloring him wrong. Most of the story was just Grimer having a predictable conversation with Kentibor about stuff I already know after Kentibor fights off a Metrix. When we could have just not seen any of the dialogue between them that recaps stuff, and seen stuff that mattered instead, like Chalk talking to Sonic, or the heroes making progress. What well, is intriguing to see Kentibor in a new way and talking to Grimer and Manic like he never did before, it doesn't make up for the issue having its focus on the wrong things. 